just uh, finish up here with regard to the Jesuits. They were suppressed in 1773 by the Pope. You must never forget that. And they were suppressed by a papal bull, Dominic Aquedemptor Noster, and it was the bull of suppression and extinction forever. The Jesuits were never allowed to come to power again, according to Pope Clement XIV's bull. Even he got tired of them? It was a four-year investigation. After four years of investigation, he said that they have completely departed from their purpose and uh, he suppresses them forever and he forever forbade anybody to talk about it or write about it. <laughs> so the Jesuits then, because they never forget or forsake, <clears throat> they poisoned him. They poisoned him with a very unique poison called Aketa. And depending on the dose, depends on how soon or how slow the victim will die. And I get into this poisoning, that he was poisoned by the Jesuits, that everybody in Italy knew the Jesuits had done it. And um, as a result then, when they went to embalm him, they removed his intestines, they put it in a box, the box exploded, it was so horrible, the stench that they had to stop the embalming. They came back the next day, his skin had turned black, his fingernails had fallen off, his hair had fallen out of his head, and so they then uh, had a closed casket for the funeral of the Pope. That is a natural cause. That is a natural cause. <laughs> so, so then, after the Jesuits were suppressed by the Pope in 1773, you remember they had been expelled from Portugal and all the Portuguese holdings in 1759. They had been expelled from France and all French holdings, including the Louisiana Purchase, for which reason Jefferson purchased it from Napoleon so that the Jesuits would not be forced to leave Louisiana. So they were expelled from all of the French holdings, and they were expelled from all the Spanish holdings, which included all of South America. And this is what is illustrated in the Masonic Rite of Hiram Abiff. Hiram Abiff is the Jesuit order. The Hiram Abiff is, is uh, killed by three ruffians. The three ruffians, Portugal, Spain, and France. The Jesuit order is dead. But who brings the Jesuit order back to life? Why, the worshipful master of the lodge whispers the secret word Mahabon in his ear, which is phallic, and gives him the right hand of fellowship and raises Hiram from the dead again. The worshipful master is the Pope. <laughs> So the three ruffians are the France, Portugal, and Spain. The worshipful master is the Pope. And so this is the third degree in Blue Lodge Freemasonry where the Jesuits are, through a parable, telling their history. All right. So what do the Jesuits do now they're suppressed? Why, the Jesuits decide to start the Illuminati. With Adam Weishaupt. Weishaupt, Weishaupt is, a, is a teacher at Ingolstadt University of Canon Law. And so then he starts the he starts the Illuminati, and his name is Spartacus. Is his real first name Weishaupt, or did he change it to that? His real last name was Weishaupt. So when did the Illuminati originate? 1776. The Jesuits were suppressed in 1773. Okay. Okay. So now they go underground and they start the Illuminati. Adam Weishaupt has the name Spartacus. Who was Spartacus? Spartacus was a slave, right? He led a Roman revolt sure. against Caesar, right? So here are the Jesuits, the slaves of the Pope, and they lead a revolt against the Caesar, who is Pope. And so what are they said to do? They want to get back the Vatican Empire because they've been suppressed. The Vatican Empire, with all of its churches and all of its properties and all of its schools and all of its wealth, is a huge prize. So what do the Jesuits do? They start the Illuminati, and they use Frederick the Great and his high-level Freemasonry to import the French Revolution into France. The Jacobins are all Masonic Jesuits. Joseph Guillotine, the man who designs the Guillotine, is a Mason and a Jesuit. And what do they do? They punish all the monarchs of Europe. They behead Louis XVI. That's a punishment for the Bourbons having suppressed the Jesuits out of France. They behead Marie Antoinette, 
why she's the daughter of Maria Theresa. She's a Habsburg because Maria Theresa expelled the Jesuits out of Austria in 1773. The Jesuits then um, killed the Dominicans because the Dominicans had taken away the Inquisition from them. So they begin to kill as many Dominicans as they can in France with the French Revolution. And then, because the Jesuits had been confined to Corsica, after their suppression, when they were brought back from South America, they bring forth Napoleon Bonaparte from Corsica. Robespierre on horseback. And so what do they do with Napoleon? He launches and wages the Napoleonic Wars. What does he do? He overthrows the king of Spain. He overthrows the king of Portugal. They go into exile in South America. And he sets up these little banana republics. Napoleon goes to war against the Knights of Malta on the island of Malta because the Knights kicked them off in 1768. In 1798, Napoleon lands there with his navy. He, he takes all the treasure of the Knights of Malta, expels them from Malta, and he goes and attacks Egypt to kill all the Mamelukes because the Mamelukes are the protectors of the Caliph of Egypt. In the meantime, the Knights of Malta go north and they're protected by the Tsar of Russia, who is also protecting the Jesuits and the Jesuit general during their suppression. Because when they're suppressed, they're protected by Catherine the Great of Russia and Frederick the Great of Prussia. Prussia is a Lutheran, Catherine the Great is Lutheran, but it's also Orthodox, so the bull doesn't have any effect in Russia or Prussia. And that's why Frederick the Great and Catherine divided Poland, Roman Catholic Poland, so that the bull would not be in effect in Poland. The Jesuits wouldn't have to leave in any of their institutions. Are they working that? All right, so the Napoleon conducts his war. He begins further to destroy Protestant Prussia. He attacks Russia. But he attacks Russia for the purpose of sacrificing his army. Because the Jesuits do not want all these nationalists, all these patriots who were German, French, and others returning to Europe when the Jesuits are anticipating setting up the Holy Alliance and bringing back the horrible kings that were in exile in England, or France, and Spain, and others. So they sacrifice Napoleon's army. You read Tolstoy's War and Peace. He will tell you how Napoleon ignorantly and stupidly sacrificed his army, took the wrong way out of Moscow, out of Russia. He deliberately sacrifices his army there. Just like Adolf Hitler deliberately sacrificed his army in Russia. Just as our Joint Chiefs of Staff are going to deliberately sacrifice our armies in the Far East and in the Middle East. Those guys are finished. They're going into a place where there is no retreat. You sink those aircraft carriers, they can't get out. And they're surrounded by fanatical Muslims. And if they do blow Mecca and Medina after, before that, they will be absolutely vindictively murdered. And I say that's what George Bush and whoever the next president's coming, that's what they're going to do. They're going to sacrifice our best soldiers somewhere in the Far East. Meaning that all you young Christian men, you do not sign up for the draft and you never go. I'll take 20 years in Leavenworth before I go there. It's not our war because they have planned for you a sacrifice there. Just as Hitler did his troops, just as Napoleon did his troops. So... After the Napoleonic Wars, the Jesuits were readmitted into France, Spain, Portugal. The kings come back, they start the Inquisition, they have the Holy Alliance. Well, during this horrible Holy Alliance, the Jesuits once again are expelled from Europe. And as I covered previously, they get together, they control Britain, and they control, then they get America after the war between the states, and they use the British Empire and the American Empire to punish all the countries of Europe with the Second Thirty Years' War. That's what they now, uh, one gentleman here active, asked about uh, Ferdinand, Archduke Ferdinand of um, Sarajevo when he was assassinated there. Very interesting story. Remember that the Austria-Hungary was a Roman Catholic Empire. Right? Austria-Hungary had broken off their concordat with the Pope. They refused to go along with all the anti-Jewish fury that was being produced in Austria at the time. And Sissy, who was the wife of Joseph, uh, Joseph, um, Arch uh, Franz Joseph, 
The Jesuits murdered her in Geneva. They had their assassin, their anarchist assassin, file to file with a point, walked up to her and stuck it into her heart. And I have her murder documented in my book with her picture on her deathbed. Walked right up to her and stuck it in her heart, just pierced it. She went back to where she was living and died there on her deathbed. So they killed Franz Joseph's wife. And now they decide to break up the Habsburg Empire because they want Austria wedded to Catholic Bavaria for the Third Reich. So what do they do? They start World War I. And when they did that, they assassinated Franz Ferdinand in Sarajevo in 1914. And that is a very interesting assassination because Prinkup didn't kill him. Franz Ferdinand was killed by a passenger, Paul Tierk, with a gun. Shot him point blank inside the vehicle, just as Kennedy was shot point blank inside the vehicle by the driver. And they blamed it on Prinkip. Right? Um, the gun that was used by the assassin, Pauti Eric, the Jesuits had in their museum until 2002 or 2003. And I have a picture of the Jesuit with the gun <laughs> that they had. Right? The Jesuit who gave who, who gave last, last rites to Prinkip was the Jesuit, and he's recording all the history. The Jesuits are also on trial there in Vienna to make sure that, there, that what really happened doesn't come out. And there is a Jesuit historian who did this, and it's a book called Sarajevo. So the Jesuits were behind the assassination of Ferdinand, and this ultimately then is blamed on Serbia. Serbia then is aligned with Russia. Russia is brought into the war. Austria is aligned with Germany. That's brought into the war. And so the Jesuits, through the assassination of uh, Franz Ferdinand, started World War I. They also did the same thing with the Lusitania. You like this story. The Lusitania was loaded with bullets, uh, bombs, you name it. Uh, and when the Lusitania came over, Winston Churchill was the Lord of the Admiralty. And Winston Churchill was telling the commander of the ship, the captain of the ship, where to sail or where to steam. And so the captain steamed right in front of a U-boat that was waiting for it. So we could sink it and then use that as a justification to bring America in on the side of Britain against Germany. See, they concoct these things. And we cannot be taken in by these horrible designs anymore. And they pulled the same thing with 9-11. And one of the things that I have said is they are not over my dead body. They're not going to get away with 9-11 like they got away with Pearl Harbor, like they got away with Lusitania, like they got away with the Gulf of Tonkin. I'm telling it high and low, the Archbishop of New York did this with the Knights of Malta controlling the CIA. And we do not belong in that papal crusade. There's no reason to be over there bringing the troops home immediately. It's a crime to have them there. Do you have any history about the driver of that limousine that uh, Kennedy was? Yes. Well, yes. Well, I, I didn't want to divert you because you're doing fantastic. So I, I, okay, well, we did with Franz Ferdinand the start of the <coughs> one. You want to go to the driver, William Greer, of the Kennedy assassination? Yes, talk about him. Wasn't there another prince or king? His name was Peter, I believe, in Croatia. King Peter, yes. Uh, Stephen assassinated him. Um, uh, Pavelic assassinated him. Because um, Peter wasn't wasn't going to go along with things. Peter was, I believe, he was a Serb. Yeah. He was Serbian, so they assassinated him because the Serbs were Orthodox, and the Jesuits, because the Orthodox, the Serbs will not go along with the Vatican. They decreed their death in World War One or World War Two. So that's why they killed nearly a million Orthodox Serbs using the Ustashi, and the Ustashi was brought to power by the SS. Hitler put Pavelic in power. It was a huge inquisition. And I have a picture of Hitler who is riding a horse as a crusader. It's a crusade. The whole Nazi World War II was a huge papal crusade to kill Orthodox Christians, Jews in Europe, and Protestant Prussians, and reform people in Holland. Well, that's what the pageants were for that they had. Yes. Yes. Celebrations. Yes. It, it, it instilled all this desire of a crusade. And then, of course, Versailles instilled in them a desire to get even because Versailles wrecked Germany. And they didn't have to do that. Germany wasn't responsible for starting that war. It was Britain. And I cover this in my book. It's called the Russian Imperial uh, uh, Treaty, where in 1892, 
Britain, France, and Russia entered into a secret treaty that if any of them were attacked by Germany, or there was any closeness to war, they would immediately attack. It's horrible. So Germany was set up for this, but then you have the Kaiser, who was ultimately serving the Jesuits another way, but see, he was betrayed because 800,000 soldiers, Russian soldiers, were mobilized on the east, in the east of Prussia. And military mobilization is an act of war. So the Kaiser was begging, and I have the, uh, I have the uh, telegrams between the Kaiser and Nicholas. After they had already agreed upon peace, the Kaiser saying, stop this mobilization, this is war. If it's war you want, then war you shall have. Eric, it doesn't make sense, though. Kennedy was Catholic, right? Yes. So evidently he was a threat to the system. Yes. And the driver that took him out was obviously had Masonic ties. And he was a Protestant. <laughs> Yeah, go over both of the Kennedys. If Just you would. one other thing, two, before we get that far up, two other things I'd like to ask you. One is the Russo-Japanese War. Russian Japanese War? Russian Japanese War. Russo -Japanese, 1905. Yes. And the other one is the... Uh, We're going to have a year to admit that. ...is the massacre of the Christians by the Kurds uh -huh. in 1906. The Armenians. The Armenian Massacre. Okay. Armenian Massacre. One of the purposes for World War I was to kill as many non-Roman Catholic Armenian Christians in Turkey. And the ones behind this were the Jesuits using their Francus Sabbatians, Sabbatian Francus, the Masonic Jewish labor Zionists, because Talat Pasha was a Jew and he was very high up in Hamid II, the Sultan of Turkey's empire. And so they worked together in the mass murder of the Armenians, and so did Kaiser Wilhelm II. He countenanced all that. And John Foster Dulles, he countenanced that too. He later became Secretary of State under Eisenhower. He countenanced all that. It was a massacre, and the Turks today deny that it happened. They're Armenian Holocaust deniers. It's two million people, that's right, from about 1895 to 1920. So it was a Vatican annihilation, and you want to get this, using Islam. They used Islam to do their dirty work. Just as they used Islam to do their dirty work against the Serbians in World War II. Remember, the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem was the select guest of Adolf Hitler in Berlin from 1941 to 1945. And the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem helped Hitler in the killing of as many Jews as possible and these, and these uh, 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 Orthodox Serbs because he was the one responsible for recruiting the Hanscher Division. Okay. So that's the Armenians. And the other one was... Uh, the Russo-Japanese War. Russo-Japanese War. Okay, remember that it was decided that the Tsar of Russia had to go uh, because of Alexander II and Alexander I. And by the way, the Jesuits were still suppressed in Russia at this time because they were suppressed in 1820 by Alexander I. Alexander also shed every Masonic lodge in 1822 and for which he was poisoned in 1825. Praise God, I like him. I have a picture hanging up of that guy. So the Jesuits decided that it's the end of the Tsar so Nicholas II was going to go along with this. So what happens is the Japanese sneak attack the Russian Navy that had been built by John Paul Jones. And they sink it. They destroy the, the Russian fleet. And remember, the Russia has been under attack since the Crimean War in 1856 to 59. That's when they lose the holy sites in Jerusalem. That's when the, the, the British, the French, and the Turks attack Russia. They're busy hammering down uh, uh, Russia at this time, Tsarist Russia, because they want to conquer Orthodox Russia, the third Moscow for the Pope. So now, in 1904, they have the Russia-Japanese War. They destroy his fleet. And guess who is the intermediary, the guy who negotiates the peace between Japan and Russia? Dirty Theodore Roosevelt, for which he gets the Nobel Peace Prize. Hmm. And remember at this time also that Emperor, uh, Emperor uh, Meiji, Meiji is the emperor that the, Je that the Jesuits put in power when he was 12 years old after they assassinated his father, Emperor Komi at 36, 
for refusing to allow the white men to enter Japan, for refusing to allow any other Catholic Christians into Japan again. So they so they control Japan. Japan is a sword of the church because they control Emperor Meiji. They control uh, Germany through Kaiser. They control uh, the Islamic um, Muslims in Turkey through Hamid II and killing off the Armenians. They're controlling all these different monarchs even though they have different religions, but they're all serving the purposes of the Vatican. That's why we can never get thrown off by saying, well, Kennedy was a Catholic. Why did they kill him? We can never get thrown off like that because they kill their own. For example, let's go to Kennedy now. John F. Kennedy, <laughs> John F. Kennedy was the greatest president we have had probably since the good things that Lincoln did. John F. Kennedy wanted to end the loopholes for the U.S. steel industry and for the oil industry. That would have brought in $300 <coughs> billion. Dollars. Well, the steel industry is run by J.P. Morgan, that company. Who owns J.P. Morgan? <laughs> the Knights of Malta. The Federal Reserve, the Knights of Malta. Um, we have um, the oil industry. Who runs the oil industry? Why, the Knights of Malta. George Herbert Walker Bush. Uh, uh, William F. Buckley Jr. He's big into oil. And so Kennedy is opposing the very men who helped to put him in power. Kennedy want, wants to print, he prints United States notes. He prints, I believe, nearly five billion dollars worth of like 4.2 something like that of United States notes. When you hand around a United States note, nobody gets any interest on it. When you hand around the Federal Reserve note monopoly money, you got to pay interest on it to the Federal Reserve. Okay? He's taken on the Federal Reserve. What does Kennedy want to do? Kennedy refuses to participate to help give Israel nuclear weapons. So Ben-Gurion hates his guts. All right? And uh, so that's why Yitzhak Rabin was in Dallas on the day of his assassination. Just hanging out, just happened to be there, right? Um, Kennedy, he, um, he wants to break the CIA into a thousand pieces because Kennedy is really an anti-communist. He doesn't want Fidel Castro in Cuba. And so, there's a new book out called Ultimate Sacrifice. You want to get it. So 900,000 pages. In that book, Ultimate Sacrifice, it tells you that Kennedy planned the attack on Cuba to take it back on December 1st, 1963, two weeks before his assassination. If he would have taken Cuba back and given it back to the Cuban people, guess what? No staging base for our invasion. Uh, Kennedy uh, warned about secret societies. Kennedy in 1960 said that no pope will tell the American president what to do as long as I'm president. He openly repudiated the temporal power of the pope. I have it on record. I have the speech. I recorded it in my book. For doing that, when he did that, that's when they set in motion his assassination. And they decided, we're not going to just kill him with a poison cup. We're going to slaughter him. We're going we're to make an example out of him. Just as Ignatius Loyola says in, this, in the spiritual exercises, or in the, in the secret instructions, we're going to blow his brains out. We're going to do it at 12.30 high at noon, in the afternoon in Dallas or wherever we're going to do it. So everybody gets to see, and we're going to film this with several film people, and we're going to show this to all the presidents, the kings, and the military dictators around the world to show you, if you think you can resist us, we can kill an American president, and nobody goes to jail. Nobody gets prosecuted except Clay Shaw. And if we can do that in free America, we can do it in Russia. We can do it in China. We can do it anywhere. That's what that was for. How was the driver able to get by with what he did? Simple. Simple. They, they, they shot him in a special place on, uh, on Elm Street. By the way, that's why they named Freddy on Elm Street. Oh. Because it's on Elm Street where they killed Kennedy. That's one of the only reason why they named Elm Street. And so what they did was they got him 
right in front of Abraham Zapruder with his millimeter, with his, with his camera, with his video. Abraham Zapruder was a 32nd degree Jewish Freemason, and he had two CIA front operations. Zapruder was CIA. That's why they let him stand there. They ran everybody else off the there grassy lawn. Nobody. nobody there. Nobody's there. That's why they let him stand there. And his secretary is standing behind him, studying him. And his secretary is a personal friend, is the wife of George de Morenschild. And George de Morenschild is the one who handles Oswald after he comes back from Russia. And George de Morenschild is a big oral baron, and he's a knight of Malta. His brother is a Russian noble and a knight of Malta, Dmitry von Morenschild. Okay? So, here's Zapruder. He's going to film this now. Now, he films it high. Because if you remember looking at the Zapruder film, you don't see the whole car. He films it high. Because there's two shooters that are going to shoot him from the front. William Greer, he's, he looks, he brakes, he brings the car almost to a complete stop. He looks, and he brings his 45 over, and he shoots Kennedy. Because remember, William Greer's left hand, and he's a SEAL. He's a Navy SEAL. He's CIA. Also, in addition to Secret Service and the driver. And the guy who's controlling Greer is James J. Rowley, whose brother's a Jesuit. Where did that bullet hit him? Hit him right here. Shot? No, the throw was before. The throw That's was near the overpass. Kennedy gets a, a bullet in the throat, first of all, before the kill zone, and he brings his hands up. Then he's shot twice in the back by the, by the follow-up vehicle, George Hickey who's shooting him with an M16. Yeah, you read about that, uh, uh, Menninger, Menninger uh, uh, Mortal Error. The book is called Mortal Error. And Howard Donahue was a ballistics uh, special. He said, even though he said Kennedy got hit in the back of the head, but he said for sure Kennedy was shot from behind by Hickey. So he shot then twice in the back. He's already got one in the neck. <coughs> Excuse me. And then as he's, as he's in Jackie's arms, Zapruder's filming this, and simultaneously he gets two headshots. He gets a headshot from the driver, and the driver shoots him about here, and it blows the back of his head off here, the right lower region of his head, onto the trunk, onto the street, and later oh, a piece of scrap called the Harper Fragment, which was traced back to here. That goes up and back and on the street. But he's also shot from the sewer. The guy raises up out of the sidewalk. There's a manhole right in the sidewalk. I have a picture of it in my book. He rises up out of the manhole and shoots Kennedy right in the side of the head here and blows his brain and matter back some 30 feet. He hits Officer Hargis, smashes him with blood and bone, and the 45 slug lands in the grass on the other side of the curb. I have a picture of an FBI agent picking it up. He pockets the slug, and nobody sees it ever again. <laughs> Kennedy was shot five times. Twice in the head simultaneously. Twice in the back, upper and lower. And once in the throat. And Conley was shot twice. So no miracle bullet. No miracle bullet. That's all Arlen right. Specter nonsense. Arlen Specter is a 33rd degree Jewish Freemason and serving, I call him Spelly's Evil Jew in my book. And they gave him a lifetime in the U.S. Senate, of which he has now put at least three Opus Dei Supreme Court justices on the Supreme Court. Right. Alito, O'Connor, oh, Thomas, Thomas, Thomas Roberts. and Roberts. Opus Dei. So now we have a Roman Catholic Secret Society Supreme Court. Members. Five members, and they get to rule on the Patriot Act. And you know who wrote the Patriot Act? Michael Chertoff, that David Jew, Yen. that Masonic Jew, and Viet Minh. Viet Minh. Viet Minh is a Roman Catholic and an instructor at Georgetown University. They put together the Patriot Act at Georgetown and had it ready to go. And David Gibbs. David Gibbs. You know what Chertoff means? No. Of the devil. Of the devil. Well, he surely so is. So his name is Michael. Michael. One like unto God. David Gibbs the second wrote like three or four different sections of the Patriot Act. David Gibbs the second. I have to check him out. So what you're saying is we're doomed. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> no, just you. We're I'm, I'm <laughs> saying <that> this is <laughs> <laughs> Now the other thing we want to remember is the man who's in charge of the Department of Homeland Security, which they immediately created after 9/11. Yeah. 
No. You're going to like this. Because remember, the Patriot Act was never read. It was passed into law, and not one congressman, not one, read it. Okay? What happened was, the guy behind the Department of Homeland Security, for which Paul Wellstone was killed because he opposed him, was a man by the name of John C. Gannon, an Irish Roman Catholic, Knight of Malta, adjunct professor at Georgetown University, Worked in the CIA for 24 years. Has given, been given the highest medal that can be given the, uh, by George Bush for a civilian. John C. Gannon was in the Jesuit Volunteer Corps in Jamaica after he was out of high school. He is a Jesuit and a Knight of Malta and a personal friend of John DeGoya, pardon me, who's another Knight of Malta and the president of Jesuit Georgetown University in Washington, D.C., which is the nation's real capital. That's right. This guy is the one who brought over Yegevni Primakov from the KGB to act as an advisor for the Department of Homeland Security. They also brought over Marcus Wolf, who was the former Stasi head of the East German secret police, who thank God he died just what, last year. So what they're doing is they're bringing in all of their communist secret police agents into the Department of Homeland Security and implement the same exact system that they pulled in Russia for the last 80 years so they can do it here. And it's the Jesuits who run it through men like John C. Gannon, all controlled by Georgetown. Okay. <coughs> so uh, that's, that's where we are today. And this crusade, as I mentioned, has to be an American crusade. So it's no wonder why Tony Blair is beginning to withdraw British troops from Iraq. Mm. It's going to have to be an entire American crusade, I guess. I was curious about uh, Robert over on the Kennedy family, and then if you could follow it up by... Uh, you mean Bobby Kennedy? Bobby, sorry. Yeah, Robert. <laughs> Where my, last, my mother's last name was McNamara, we called it Bobby. Oh, okay. <laughs> Anyways, and then also follow up by, uh, there's, uh, what do you think about the whole MacArthur situation? Was he a Jesuit who just got out of line or, or what? Okay. First of all, Bobby Kennedy. Remember, the Vietnam War was called Cardinal Spellman's War. His <coughs> war. Much accomplished, much was accomplished in that war, particularly the unification and the working together of the Mafia and the CIA. That's why every one of our cities is floating in drugs. Because the Vatican's Mafia and CIA working together to bring it in from the Golden Triangle, and all the drugs are given to the Mafia dons, and they make all the sales and sell billions of dollars worth, and then all this money is run through the Knights of Malta, their banks there in New York, and then all that money is taken and used for their underground facilities and anything else they want to finance in their international intelligence community. William Casey said, I want to have an international intelligence community that's not beholden to the U.S. Congress. So that's how they finance it, through all the drugs and everything else they can do. <coughs> Bobby Kennedy wanted to end the Vietnam War prematurely, just like JFK. Well, that was not good, because that was Spellman's Inquisition. And it then later became Cook's Inquisition, Cardinal Cook. So because Bobby wanted to end the Vietnam War and he wanted to continue to prosecute these Mafia Dons, he was killed by the same people within the CIA and military intelligence that killed his brother. They killed him in Los Angeles in control of the Los Angeles Police Department. That's why nothing good can, can come out of the LAPD. That's why I give O.J. Simpson the benefit of the doubt. And so the LAPD is totally corrupt because they destroyed some 10,000 pieces of evidence according to William Pepper in his book, Orders to Kill that would have shown collusion with the intelligence communities killing Robert Kennedy. William Pepper, orders to kill, you must read it. <coughs> what do you suppose is the, uh, do you think these things sort of like the Waco incident, the Ruby Ridge incident, Indianapolis Baptist Temple, various things along this line, are just uh, muscle flexes to let people know? Muscle flexes and a test. Just to see what to can see be pushed. And what what can, can be pushed, that's right. And since they had no resistance, they go to 9-11. And no resistance to that, more war. 
But what, what we're having here was happening. Uh, did I cover everything you mentioned? MacArthur. MacArthur. Remind me to go back to George Bush and his loss of popularity. MacArthur. General Douglas MacArthur was a servant of the Jesuit order from the very beginning. And that was a hard one for me to, to grasp because I always liked him. And a high level Freemason. He was a 33rd degree Freemason. General Douglas MacArthur was the one behind the burning of Hooverville. You remember that? No. Yes, uh, that's the uh, town that everybody created in the Mall of D.C., isn't it? Yes. And why did they create that? Well, because they had no other place to go. It was kind of like a demonstration. And that was a demonstration. They had no place to go, and they wanted their thousand bucks. They wanted their money. They wanted their thousand bucks. They were all World War I veterans. And they were promised this money. And because of the Great Depression, they didn't have anything, so they wanted it a little bit sooner. Tent city. Okay? So they called it a tent city, and they built it. It was cardboard and all that. Well, Hoover, Herbert Hoover gave the order to disperse them. But MacArthur, because he's working with with uh, FDR and Al Smith, he destroys Hooverville. He burns it and he drives them out. Which is when Ho Hoover's popularity really began. That's when it just was destroyed. That was the shoe in for FDR. That made him <coughs> president. So do you think that Hoover was a uh, victim of circumstance? In that, issue, in that issue, but you see, he was dirty. Because Hoover was the one who went over to Russia and brought $60 million worth of food and other supplies to supply the Bolsheviks so the Bolshevik Revolution would be a success. And he later became like president of something, or was it the Supreme Court that he was on? Or? No, no, that was Taft. He was in charge of something. Of he, was in he was the Secretary of Commerce That's what it was. in 1922 under Warren Harding. Warren Harding was another 33rd degree Freemason, but he was a very good president as far as the things he implemented. No. No uh, internationalism, no League of Nations. He did a whole bunch of good things, but they poisoned him too. So uh, anyway, th that's what happened to MacArthur. So MacArthur then, they use him, and he conducts the war in the Far East. And the war in the Far East was completely managed. It could have been won easily. There was no reason for Tarawa and Iwo Jima and all those sacrifices. They were not necessary. But MacArthur's part of it. MacArthur's part of the betrayal of the Indianapolis. MacArthur is the builder of the Cold War. There's huge communists over there. We have this communist threat. It's going to come. It's going to kill us all. It's nonsense. The communists couldn't make a wheelbarrow. Nothing covered. They couldn't do anything. The Russia was nothing. They had no paved roads in the name of Christ. They had nothing. They were never a threat unless communist Russia and China was built by American industry and they needed more time. And because Kennedy wanted to end it prematurely, because our enemies weren't quite yet built, they killed him. And MacArthur played along with it the whole way. He continued to beat the anti-Cold War drum. What about Korea? Well, evidently MacArthur, for, for a moment, wanted to win Korea. Yeah, because, he, he, because, job. because when he landed his destroyers at Incheon, the tides at Incheon rose and fell 40 feet. So he left the destroyers on the beach. He went in there, he defeated the Chinese. And for that, Dirty Harry Truman relieves him of his command. Because you see, General, we got to lose Korea. I mean, God in his providence did not allow South Korea to go at that time because there were many of his elect there that needed to be saved. Amen. So there was, there was much missionary work that went on there after. What about the uh, uh, one thing that's been brought up quite a bit is the U.S. is liberty. Liberty. The liberty was aiding the Arabs. It was a spy ship, and it was aiding the Arabs. And, so, and the other thing is, this was done, I believe, on order of the Vatican to ultimately begin the turn against Israel by the American people. Because it was not necessary. The whole 67 war was orchestrated. There was no need for that. I mean, our own president turning around and saying, I want that blank, blank ship on the bottom of the nation. That's right, Lyndon Johnson. Lyndon Johnson was an absolute Jesuit temple coadjutor. His best friend was a priest from Francis Xavier Church in Stonewall, Texas, Winnebul Snyder. His, his Johnson's mistress was a Roman Catholic. She had a son to him. He wasn't from Texas. He was. Let's point this out. No, no, he was from Texas. No, no, he wasn't. Are you, well, his grandfather was a Baptist and from Texas. Are you insinuating he was stepping out by saying mistress? <laughs> well, I'll tell you, I have a book I just purchased at a yard sale. 
it shows Pope Pius, the whatever it was after Kennedy was assassinated. Paul, Paul, Paul VI. Paul VI coming to New York, meeting with Lyndon Johnson. Yes. And the first persons that he goes to see is Jacqueline. Yeah. Yeah, what's that whole Just to rub her nose in she, it and you can see the other boys. She saw what went on, so how did they keep her quiet? Or did, like, they, they threatened to kill they her kids? the marriage or I mean what? They, they threatened to kill her kids. kids? They threatened to kill her kids? You talk, yeah. Carolyn's dying and so is John Jr. But they did anyway. They didn't kill Carolyn. Carolyn's a member of the Council on Foreign Relations, the very murderers that killed her father. No. And they killed John Jr. because he got out of line later on when he grew up. But she married she married uh, Onassis. He's a knight of Malta. He's a Greek knight of Malta. Wow. Along with Spiros Skouris. Did she really have a choice in that, you think? Or was that to keep her She was already check? pregnant once with this kid. Well, supposedly, yeah, she was already pregnant by him. I think that was part of him taking care of her after they killed her husband. Yes? I talked to a fellow at church. He was in the Navy in World War II in the Pacific. And he said he was on a carrier fleet that was instructed to sail into a typhoon under General Nimitz. Yes, yes. Instructed in that, he said they lost, it. in his words, a couple of tin cans. So they had a couple ships sink. Yes, yes. Nimitz was a stinking, dirty traitor, along with Admiral Stark, because Admiral Stark was also behind the Pearl Harbor bombing. And then they, then they whacked uh, husband uh, Kimmel, and General Short blamed them, used them as the fall guys, but yes, uh, Nimitz could have won that quite a, quite a easily before. But see, they were, were working both sides, because why did they do this? We have to bomb Japan back to the Stone Age. And after we bomb Japan and totally destroy everything of its ancient culture, then we're going to rebuild it so it can make cars, and so it can be this huge commercial empire to use it on the side of China for our future invasion. Do you suppose that we have outside in the political realm or in the governmental realm of the world, do we have any allies? No. America doesn't have one foreign ally anymore. They've all been betrayed. Do we as Christians have any allies outside of Christ? Not that I know of. George W. is popular. You said mention that to you. Oh, yes, George W. George W. Bush. Of course, his skull and bones. He's a Mason. His father's a highly <coughs> Mason. His brother's a Knight of Columbus. His uncle's a Knight of Malta. He's dirty, dirty, dirty. And before 9-11 happened, George Bush took a trip to Rome and conferred with Pope John Paul II as they worked out all the arrangements. And remember all the archbishops and the cardinals, they left this country and they went to Rome to talk about the supposed sodomite problem. No, they, they couldn't care less because they're all sodomites. <laughs> What they did was, is they were planning for the attack of 9-11. Because remember, the arch, the cardinal, the archbishop of a city, he controls the government of that area, and then the Jesuits control, the, the Pope controls the archbishop, and the Jesuits control the Pope. So the, the, uh, George Bush then was involved in 9-11, um, and then after that, they used that to ignite this war, but I've, always, I've said that his popularity must go down. And this is exactly what's happened. His popularity must go down, down, down. And he's talking about weapons of mass destruction that didn't exist. He's and remember Valerie Plain and her, and her uh, husband Wilson? Right. He's a decent guy. Wilson told the truth. He said Nigeria, or Niger never tried to get, uh, was never approached by getting any atomic uh, substance from Iraq. It's a whole lie. And uh, then Valerie Plain is betrayed not by Scooter Libby, but Dick Cheney and George Bush. And who knows how many CIA agents were killed over that betrayal. So in the meantime, George Bush, his popularity is going down, 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 down. And you say, these people are dangerous. They have weapons of mass destruction. We could very well get nuked here. I have a book called Endgame by two American generals. So you're saying they're setting him up to be really right. Yeah! Absolutely. They're setting him up to be right because when the detonations take place, see, I told you so. All these Muslims in this country, we've detonated these devices, they, 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 uh, they snuck them in here. There's no sneak in any atomic bomb in here. You can see them all from the satellites. It's all nonsense. They have them in place, they've been put in place for 20 years, and when they decide to detonate them at a certain time of the year, when the sun's in the right harmonic relationship to where they want to detonate, they will detonate, 
and then they will justify a whole bunch of other things. Opening the camps, suspending the Constitution. We're going to have total war, just like Goebbels had in Nazi Germany. We're going to draft all the young men from 18 to 35. And we're all going to fight those Muslims and kill them because look what they did to us. When in fact it was the dirty, stinking intelligence communities run by the Vatican did. The CIA, the FBI, KGB, Mossad, all working for the Vatican. And that way the Pope can step up one day and go, I can fix this. And the other thing is this. Remember that the Pope's formal position is that he's against this war. Right. So it doesn't look like the Pope's really behind it when he caused it. The other position is this. Europe, we're not, on this, we're not involved in this war. And that's why they're bringing Britain out of it. Because Britain cannot be, afford to be a target for some Muslims that might want to bomb Britain. Because they left. Because they're leaving. That's right. Britain has to be in the Holy Roman revised empire of the Pope. And remember, the, the, uh, the, the Anglican Church is thinking about reuniting with the Pope now. That's just what they want. So then when Britain gets out of this war, there's no reason for them to bomb any place in Europe. And when Mecca and Medina are blown, then they can, and then when they blow maybe northern Miami, maybe Houston, I'm, all, I'm very sure they're going to I very strongly feel they're going to do Los Angeles. Maybe New York City. They're going to hit the Jewish populations and the historic Protestant and Baptist populations as much as possible. So when they pull that off, they can justify all kinds of martial law, suspension of the Constitution, and all the troops now that have been trained in Iraq from house to house warfare, they're all ready to do it here in our major cities. They've been testing it now. They've already tested it. They've already perfected it. In the meantime, they're busy killing off our best troops with depleted uranium in Iraq. They're all getting sick. They're all coming back with their, with their genes all fouled up, so they're fathering children without arms, without legs, further destroying the population and uh, further weakening our military so we can't defend against an invasion. Eric, what's the order as far as the Pope, the Jesuits above him? Or who does he answer to? Or just, okay, just yeah, briefly? Yeah, the Black this? Pope. A Jesuit general. What's his name? That's Klobenbach. Peter Hans Klobenbach. They're going to be another congregation. They're going to elect a new one. Where's he? Year. Now, where's his throne? He lives outside Vatican walls of Borgo Santo Spirito Number no. Five in Rome. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> he he then, with his Jesuit order, is to control the Pope, and the Pope controls all the Roman hierarchy. Okay. Okay. The Jesuit general also controls all high-level Freemasonry. All of it, which includes the Pope and the hierarchy. Okay. Um, and so that's how the work. And then the hierarchy, they run the governments. So the master of George Bush is Edward Cardinal Egan. The master of the pres of Stephen Harper of, of uh, Canada is the Archbishop of, of uh, Montreal. The, uh, the, the master of Putin in Russia is the Patriarch of Moscow. It's all, it, this, all this religious stuff that we think they're, they're benign and harmless, they're the great rulers of the earth, and they control all the intelligence communities. And it's the intelligence communities that control your elections, they control who runs. The CIA, the CIA doesn't want you running, you're not going to run. You're either going to stop or you're going to get a bullet, unless the Lord's protecting you. It's like George Wallace. If you're a black man and you're talking about black nationalism and we need our own country here in North America or we need to go back to Africa, you're going to get a bullet, just like Malcolm X. Malcolm X was a decent individual and he advocated things the Vatican did not want. And so they killed him and they controlled the New York Police Department, which is why they never found, they really never found the source of his murders. If the Cardinal, Cardinal Cook, Cardinal, Cardinal Spellman was behind it. Cardinal Spellman killed Malcolm X. There can be nobody that has true nationalism with leaders that are going to rule for their benefit. Nobody. And they, they maintain this power through the international intelligence community, which is financed by the Federal Reserve Bank and ultimately us, yes. Now you mentioned earlier something about OJ. Mm -hmm. What would you be referring to there? Well, I believe for a long time that OJ killed his white wife. But I don't believe it anymore. Because according to my Jewish friend, uh, Lenny Bloom in Canada, he knows a Hollywood um, producer that said there were several black men who went in together with their fortunes 
and they bought controlling stocks in Ford International. Ford International is a very powerful international corporation. It's also involved in weapons production, I believe. Not to be confused with Ford Motor Company. Yes, yeah, not Ford Motor Company, it's Ford International. Okay. The men involved in this deal were O.J. Simpson, Michael Jordan, Bill Cosby, and a few other very wealthy blacks. Well, well when like they, everything's happened to one of them. Yes, isn't that interesting? Let me get there. Defense lawyer, what was his name? Uh, Shapiro. We'll talk about his son. So what happens is when the Jesuits or the Knights find out what's been done, they send O.J. Simpson a gun loaded and tell him to blow his brains out. And so uh, Simpson, they contact him, and he then sells back all the stocks. So they get all their control back of Ford International. But it's not long after that his wife and her friend, who's Jewish, get, get viciously murdered. Okay. And it's very interesting because they found a footprint, foot, a, foot, a blood uh, thumbprint or a fingerprint on the back gate that they never brought as evidence to trial. You want to tell me why the, the thumbprint or the fingerprint will tell you who it is? They refused to admit it into evidence at the trial. Why? Because it wasn't Simpson, that's why. And so now, after this happens, of course Simpson's career is ruined. Um, Michael Jordan's father is killed. Shapiro's son dies of a drug overdose. Bill Cosby's son is killed. Gunned down. Gunned down. You have all these guys that are killed that were related to this deal getting whacked. The odds are too great that it's by coincidence. And therefore, on those things alone, I said the whole investigation needs to be reopened. Mark Furman is a liar. <clears throat> uh, and they deliberately threw the case and would not allow evidence to be brought in because it would have acquitted him and it would have led elsewhere. So rather they take it on to a wrongful death civil suit and Simpson loses to that. I tend to think no, Simpson is not guilty. If he was involved, he's not the only one. Eric? Yes? What would you uh, say to those that, those Christians, professing Christians today that seem to be deceived by these mega churches, these big apostate Christian organizations that seem to be controlling what's going on today in terms of the uh, Christianity. Well, I, I think uh, your pastor Mike here would be able to deal with that real well, but I'll just second it by saying that it's not of the Lord. It's not of God at all. And what are they doing? They're preaching an Armenian gospel. Yeah, no repentance. No repentance. Ask Jesus into your heart. And uh, ipso facto, I'm going to pronounce you saved. It's no difference in the confessional. You go to the confessional, the priest says, Say, Hail Mary is in our Father, and now you're forgiven your sins. Sorry. In the evangelical world, you say, Okay, ask Jesus into your heart. All of a sudden, ipso facto, you're saved. There's no repentance at all. None. And so they're pronouncing people saved, and they're not saved. You know why they're not saved? Because I can tell what happens. There's never a political movement to undo any of this. And they use the rapture. They use the, I hate to use that term, they use the appearing of the Lord as an excuse to let the house burn down. Instead of saying, no, I will occupy till he comes and I'm not going to allow this to happen, just like our Baptist forefathers did. Mm -hmm. Or they go to the other extreme of, hyper-Calvinism and say, well, God's sovereign. He's in control of everything. Therefore, there's really nothing I can do about it. This is just a bump in the road. It's just a bump in the road. <laughs> so there's no effectual praying and intervening where God will answer their prayers and step in for them and kill this man over here, give this guy polio, have this guy get hit by a train so that this begins to stop because the Lord needs to get involved. There's nothing we can do about it. And so I say all these mega churches, they are powerless. Jack Van Ampey, Kenneth Copeland, of course he's of the devil anyways, the 30, 33rd degree. <laughs> sure, we got Jack John Hagee. I sent Hagee oh, a copy of my book. He never responded to me with any of that. Well, D. James Kennedy, he's got the Jesuit symbol in his church. Two of them. Two of them. We got Billy, 33rd degree Freemason Graham. Holstein. 
Olstein, that's that 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 uh, oh, he's not, not even the a eye, preacher. The eye blinker. So so all these guys are upon. If you're on the TV and you have good press, you are not serving God because if you're on there, you're not going to be telling the truth. Every preacher in this country should be saying 9/11 was an inside job, and nobody in our church is going to fight this crusade. Nobody. If you do, you're out. This is the Pope's war. They're setting us up. And you know what? They didn't pick a Roman Catholic to start this. They picked a Protestant. I heard Chris Matthews. Remember Chris Matthews? He's trained by Jesuits. He went to Holy Cross. Just like Tim Rissert. He's trained by Jesuits. He went to John Carroll. They're all a bunch of stinking Jesuits. Okay, and what are they doing? They're calling George Bush Oliver Cromwell. He's a great liberator. He's going to fight the armies, the enemies of the Lord. And they're going to blame it on the evangelical, fundamentalist, Bible-believing people because that's what George Bush pretends to be. When in fact he's totally backed by the Cardinal of New York, by all the Knights of Malta, including his uncle, and he knows it's all a Vatican game to take this and blame it on us. And that's how many pictures of the president kissing the Pope's ring do you need? Right. Him him and Billy Graham. Billy, Billy Graham? Yeah, him and Billy Graham. Oh, him and Billy Graham. 33rd degree. Wow. So, so all the, the organized Christianity of today, as long as it's incorporated and they've departed from the King James Bible, they're all serving the Vatican. And if they're all uh, uh, doing that, not every Bible college that I know of, very few use the King James and the text receptus as the Word of God. So they're all of none effect in resistance. Yes. Now, I was glad you went there. I was going to ask you, do you have a lot of knowledge or information on some of like the leaders of fundamentalism? That's where I see a lot of the weakness, the supposed facade. Uh, John R. Rice and some of these men who claim to be born again, who claim to be fundamental, and yet it's through their leadership that Christianity, true Christianity, went from the forefront to non-existent. They're all Arminians, brother. It's a free will gospel. As long as we believe man has a free will, we're not preaching. We, are, we, are, we will not truly understand the nature of man and the salvation of God. Now, I don't see any Calvinism or Arminianism in 1 Corinthians 15. But as long as you champion the free will of man, which they do, you play right into the hands of the Jesuits. It's an Arminian gospel. Where do you see the last great preacher? You see the Billy Sunday? No. Billy Sunday was friends with the Vatican. Was he? Yes. He made big mistakes in that, especially towards his live ministry. Billy, Billy Sunday was an acrobat. He was an actor. He was an entertainer. And he was close friends with the Vatican, and he was behind what woman suffrage. He was behind prohibition. Prohibition was a design by the Vatican to make their mafia rich. <laughs> so who would you say is the last great American preacher? Oh, I'll tell you one preacher I like listening to. He's a black preacher out of Baltimore. His name is Joe Brown. He's a great preacher. I used to listen to him every day on the way to Bible college. I, I think, I, I don't know who you would say, maybe J. Frank Norris, he was a good preacher. He was he separated from the Southern Baptist Convention, he was a Baptist. He had to ki kill a guy in his study, he had to shoot him, but uh, yeah. he was still he was a good preacher. Really good. He, yeah. was, uh, he was quite a man. Yeah, J. Frank, J. Frank Norris was a yeah. Heard you, heard you came to Dallas to kill him. I just thought I'd come down here to the train station and introduce myself. <laughs> but, uh, but that, but I think there's a, I think there are good local preachers. You know, like your pastor here, from what I know of him, and, and others. But anybody well known, it's got to be, got to be 80 years, something like that. How about for charities, you know, these public charities, what would you recommend to people in terms of donating money to them, you know, Goodwill and, uh, you know, all these big charities, are they the fronts for the Give it all to the Red anything? Cross. Give it all to the Red Cross. Well, I don't have a problem with Goodwill because my family gets some of our clothes there. <laughs> <laughs> and, it's, and they're like brand new. Yeah. They're like brand new. Yeah, so, we'll, them as an example. so we'll take our the clothes. The big guys. The big guys. Red Cross, no way. <laughs> Red Cross is, well, the Red Cross helped Himmler escape Europe. It's all intelligence. Has they really asked any yeah. World War II or Vietnam or oh, yeah. the Korean War servicemen about the Red Cross? Yeah. They just hate it. Oh, yeah. yeah. And what's another one? Trying to sell their mail to them. Yeah. Salvation Army. Do you believe 
Jubilee. Jubilee, yeah, that's good. See, so we, we go to Jubilee, we take our our clothes and exchange it like brand new stuff. So I don't have probably Jubilee, but but the Red Cross and these been the United Way, that's all of the papacy, and it does not help. See, and this is why we should be strong local government. Right. Local government should be liberal. In other words, we, we adjust to the needs of, of each other. But central government, or if we're going to confederate together, it's very limited. And you can only do this. And if you go beyond this, we're seceding. Secession's the only answer. Secession's the only That's why I end up in my book. Secession or expatriation. So what I call for in my, my book is the starting of a new white nation somewhere here in North America that is Bible-based. I'm clear. That's correct. <laughs> Any That's suggestions for a geographical location? Yeah. That, I don't know. Um, I, I thought of, uh, I thought, well, look what's happening. It's a global thing. It's, it? look, what, look what's happening. You have, okay, let's define a nation. I don't want anybody here to think that I hate black people or Mexicans. Okay. But I'm white, and I have a right to be white. And I speak English, and I have a right to speak English or try to speak English. See. I have, a, I have a right to have a culture that supports white people, that supports English-speaking people, because I'm white, and because that's my choice. And so when, I have, well, so when I advocate this, that's what I'm advocating. So what I advocate is that the, we have some area where we can secede, and we can start our own nation once again, that springs from the church. The church, as it did in the colonies, started the colonies. Mm -hmm. The Baptist Church in Rhode Island started Rhode Island and ultimately becomes a sovereign nation. Right. It has to start with the church first and then it goes out into the civil area having of course separation that our church is not part of the government but that our Bible dictates the principles of that government. Okay? So that's what I advocate. I advocate separation. Uh, I, I advocate segregation of the that we ha have a white nation and the only other race that can live among us but they will not be allowed to, you know, to race mix with us and marry are the Jews, are the racial Jews. And I don't mean Talmudic Jews. We will not have any Talmud in our country because it calls Jesus Christ a bastard and his mother a whore. That right there, you're out. There won't be any canon law in our country. That's out. We won't have any Jesuit immoral theologians. That's out. We're not having any Koran. That's out. Those are all horrible, oppressive religious documents that ultimately persecute us. So therefore, our final document will be the Reformation Bible with its underlying original languages. Yes. Uh, what? Uh, how does a person like myself, you know, research a particular person that we suspect to be Jesuit or Knight of Malta or something like that? Like, uh, I want to research Harlan Horton, for instance. How do I find out? Just what he's a part of? <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, I get on the internet. I go to the Knights of Malta. Uh, to see what you can find in that area. Try to find connections to Jesuit universities. Well, he graduated from Bob Jones. Okay, if you graduate from Bob Jones, you want to find out if he's a Mason. We know Bob Jones the third is a Mason, right? right. So, and we know that uh, that, uh, that uh, Charles Sumner is a Jesuit coadjutor, but constantly pushing Westcott and Hort. Right. Something. Zondervan Prince. Zondervan, Zondervan, Zondervan Prince. Zondervan 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 so you have to connect them with their connections because this is the value of the doctrine of separation. We separate from anything that might implicate us with these men. Mm -hmm. And they don't. And they know the doctrine of separation. And when they don't separate, then as a result, you can tie them to them. Just like uh, you've got Gates, um, of course, George that's Town. Yeah, that's that's Book and Snake? Just Book and Snake. Here he is, Georgetown Snake. University. Board. Uh, taken the place of Rumsfeld, who spent years at Georgetown, mm -hmm. who was appointed, who was friends with Clinton, who went to Georgetown. Yes, who was friends with Tommy Lee Jones, who went yeah. to Georgetown. Georgetown. Sure. Who was the roommates with Black. Al Gore. Al Gore? Al Gore and Tommy Lee who Jones were roommates. Who at Georgetown. Who, who they were roommates. They were, they were, there was only two people in a room in Georgetown, and they were roommates <laughs> for two of their four years. So, so uh, and see, now you see the men in black? The yeah. movie Men in Black? They're Jesuits! Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, sure. How about one last thing on yes. Alberto? I mean, what's your, with all the the uh, reading material you've 
you've seen? What's your final uh, understanding of them? Alberto Rivera was exactly who he said he was. He was a Jesuit with a fourth vow. And in fact, uh, my friend Greg Szymanski, um, who I've done radio broadcasts with on arcticbeacon.org, he's had Nuri Rivera on last week. Mm -hmm. So you want to listen to his interviews with her and uh, Lu uh, Leo Zagami. He was a Muslim, but he was a Roman, noble, Illuminati P2, and he confirms everything that we are, I am saying, that the Vatican brought down the World Trade Center so they could have a crusade against Islam. And he came right out of P2 in the Monte Carlo Lodge. Seeing that America has no more than like, what did you say, 10 years? What would you say we should do to prepare for it? Great. <laughs> Yeah, I would pray and, uh, and seek the Lord about it, but remember that, you know, we need to do something. Our forefathers left Europe and came here to escape the Inquisition. Not to hide. Not to hide. They came there to start fresh. Right. Because after all, they'd been, we'd been killed for 200 years. Every city in Europe was burning our brethren every day in order to phase. So what do I think we ought to do? I think we ought to find a place where we can be white, where we're not going to be followed by these Roman Catholic Mexicans, where we can escape the black savagery that's going on in every major city in the north, and probably down here too, as opposed to the civil blacks, many of whom are Bible-believing Christian people, and I feel sorry for them, but they're going to have to deal with this their way. We need to go to a place where we can be white, have a white area where we can uh, have our own food, we can have our own weapons for our own protection, or we can uh, begin to start fresh and anew. Because if we stay in this position, they are going to round us up and take us to the concentration camps. That's right. You're absolutely right. You heard about the uh, group of people, the 230 families uh, in Idaho that took over a whole county? No. That's yeah, Jack, like, Jack McClamp. I mean, they're not, they're not born the, again. They're not, the Bible isn't their like, forefront, but they have the idea, I think. They have the right idea. You know, yeah. and I, and I agree with that. You see, here, here's one of my points. All of the West is going to be taken yeah. by the Chinese. Done. They're, they're done. But wouldn't so that be better to try and fight the people that look like you? At least you know your enemy. And in some of those mountainous areas, are the only parts of America that are uncharted. There's plenty of that in New England. I say New England is the safest place in Nova Scotia and those areas up and through there. Oh, you're saying the Canadian. That right. Canadian area and up in, in, in Vermont and Maine and New Hampshire and those kind of, it's white, it's, unfortunately it's cold, but it's in that area that uh, I say we're the best off in any part of the country. All of the West is going to be given to the Chinese, the South is going to be given to the Muslims, and then they'll conduct their inquisition here for another 30, 40 years if the Lord tarries. They're going to do the, the people here what they did to the Russians for the last 70 years. So I say we need to be up in the northern parts where it's cold, where white people are better off in the cold anyway. You can eat the fish out of the water. Eat the fish. <laughs> we can do that. And I've seriously been thinking about Canada. I just don't know. I've been praying about it. Yeah, it's a good water but, supply. But, 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 well, I, I, Eric, I put my prayers to action. I bought a couple of lots up in Nova Scotia last summer. Went up to take a look at them. On the water. So anybody that needs a lot of water, of course it's seawater, so you're going to have to find a way of purifying it, but nevertheless, uh, I, have, I have two parcels up there. Okay, here, here's why I think Nova Scotia is a good place, because it will never be given to the Chinese, and it will never be given to the Muslims. It's too cold for them? It's cold, and it's also part of England. Ah, it's the Commonwealth of England. It's Commonwealth of England. And That's remember, good. they have the largest port on the east coast of Nova Scotia. They have a huge aircraft carrier there. Halifax. That, Halifax, Nova Scotia. That's right. They will never give that area to Rome. And what I see they're going to do here is what they did to Germany. They're going to partition this company, country. The Chinese will get the West and the Russians. The Muslims and the Chinese will get the South. And the Northeast is going to be taken by Europe hmm. when Europe arrives here. As it once was. As it once was. How about the Midwest, though? So Florida will be Arab. That's a big flood. Like Florida will be full of Mexican, 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 Mexican Arabs. Yeah. Mississippi River. Now. It's a big flood plain. Yeah, it's a big flood plain. So, so that's what I say. And see, the other thing, too, you guys are young. You guys have wives to choose yet. You need to be able to be mobile. And that's out of Nova Scotia into Europe. 
The future for these children is not here. The future for these children is in Europe. Because after this crusade, they're going to build Europe. They're going to have a revived Holy Roman Empire. The Euro will be the standard of the world. And they're going to solidify the finance of Europe more than any other place. It has more people. It has the, the greatest armies. Germany will be the center of the new revived Europe. It will be the economic hub of the world. Whoever controls Germany controls Europe. Whoever controls Europe controls the world. And so I say for you young people, you want to think about Canada, Nova Scotia, and when you're able, to Scotland or to somewhere like that. Because this place, North, especially the U.S., is going to be the killing floor for the 21st century. This is going to be the place. That's why they brought all the Muslims in our major cities. That's why they bring all these Mexicans up here, George Bush and Vincente Fox and the others. They brought them all up here. And the blacks, they're in deep trouble. You ever been in Yermon Heights? Really? Now, of course. Oh, yeah, they want to because, because you see, the Mexicans are going to displace all the blacks as laborers. What are the blacks going to do? They're going to go to war. And when that happens, there'll be a race war between the Mexicans and the blacks. Maybe whites will even be involved. And that will justify opening the camps and sending them all there. Remember, Lenin said, to have a successful revolution, you have to move the middle class. So what have they done to us whites? They've taxed us to death. They've had us under white flight for the last 50 years. We cannot have a white culture. We have been forcefully race mixed. And so what's happening to us? We are, we are losing our race. We have mulattoes everywhere. We cannot have a white culture. We're being Africanized in the arts and TV. And so what's that doing to the many, many white people? They're dri it's driving us into the fascist right-wing camp of Fox News Network. It's a unifying of Catholic whites and Protestant whites together to have a common enemy of the blacks and the Mexicans and the Muslims. So we will be the fascists of the 21st century. And so we, does they that make kill, sense? They want to kill all of that's right. They've used the blacks to destroy the country, and then after they've used them, they're going to send them all to the camps. You've never seen a, a black in a concentration camp, have you? They kill them. Well, my point is that, you know, we, so we have... I'm going to Nova Scotia. That's why AIDS is so rampant in Africa. That's right. And they don't want to heal it. They, they don't want to help. Keep, you know. But, but, but the, the point is that if we... Uh, because there are so few people of our understanding, I don't feel guilty in leaving. Because nobody's going to believe you if you tell them. They're, like, They're wow. not going to believe you. And the, all the mass majority of these Christians, they all believe the war in Iraq is a wonderful thing. No. Okay? So we want to just separate ourselves from that. You know what? The Lord will bless us for it. Amen. It's like Lot. Yeah. Yeah. Any more questions? Comments? Okay, Pastor Mike, thank you for your time.